got it? All right. All right, let's get started. All right. So today, uh, I'm going to start by trying to walk through how we're going to expand our final project this week uh, to make it go from the solution that has non-contiguous behavior to a solution that does have contiguous behavior. Um, I want to make sure that everyone understands that, what they need to do to their models to get this additional behavior in, and then with whatever time is left, we'll then continue and work on our decision model. But the, the primary focus, I want to make sure that no one leaves here today without knowing what they're supposed to do with your model. Okay. So, uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to do something that's called introducing a seeded model. Uh, so, what, uh, let's say you've got your stereotypical rectangular uh, state that you get to, uh, most of you do not get to deal with, um, and I'll break it up into a, a bunch of different counties here, again, in a nice grid pattern that you also don't get to, to deal with. All right, but what you're going to do is you are going to set up uh, what I've called seeds as kind of the cornerstone or the starting point for these congressional districts. So let's pretend that this particular state that we're modeling here on the board has four congressional districts. One thing that you could do is you could put a seed in each one of these corners right here. That's not the only thing that you could do. You could just as easily put uh, four seeds right here in the middle. Um, and, and so you get to choose where you want to put these seeds. That's completely arbitrary and, and up to you. You'll do this once for this week's lab. And then for the final project that's due, you're going to do it two more times with two different, uh, for a total of three different seedings. Okay. The idea is that when you start with one of these seedings, we're going to ensure that each one of these is in a different congressional district. And then you're going to kind of connect other counties that are connected to it um, in such a way that by, by connecting some or not connecting others, you will uh, keep them contiguous, but uh, you will uh, grow them in proportion to their size. So if, if one of these counties is really big, it might be part of one congressional district, uh, but then the, the counties around it will have to be part of some other congressional district to try to balance out your different congressional districts and make sure that they're different sizes. All right. So let's, let's see how this is going to work. I'm going to take somewhere in this map here, uh, we're going to assume that uh, we've got <coughs> this congressional district, uh, that, sorry, this configuration of counties. So I'm going to do um, counties A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. And specifically, I want to look at county I in isolation here for a second. Here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask whether county I, E can be part of congressional district number one. Okay. So we're going to ask, does E belong to Congressional District number one? That's the question that we're, we're going to ask. And then you'll formulate a constraint that, that will uh, encompass the, this question here. And in order to answer that question, you have to know where the seed for Congressional District number one is. Okay, so let's just assume uh, that the seed for Congressional District number one is over here somewhere. Okay. Now, in general, the only way 
that E can be part of that, because if it's touching some county, that's touching some other county, that's touching some other county, eventually that's touching this county right here. Okay. Um, and you could, especially if you wanted to gerrymander things, you could get into a situation where that kind of goes like that and gives this weird shape of, of configurations in order to make that contiguity. Uh, but we're going to make a slightly simplified assumption, okay? So not all possible configurations are going to be able to come out of the, what, what we're going to do. We're going to do a, a subset of these. And what we're going to say is that we will allow E to be in Congressional District 1 if any of the counties that it is touching that are closer to this Congressional District are also in Congressional District number one. Okay, so for this example, the, I would look at this visually here and say that County B, County C, and County F are all closer to that C than County E is. So what I'm going to, to say is that E is only allowed in Congressional District number one if B or C or F are already in Congressional District number one. Okay? So I will not let E be in this Congressional District if none of these three are in that Congressional District already. Okay? Does the, the English constraint that I'm saying make sense, or do I need to clarify any questions? Yes, David. Um, not necessarily about your constraint, but are we choosing, um, like if our state has 13 districts, are we choosing 13 seeds? Yes, you need to choose one seed for each congressional district. Uh -huh. Usually when you have that many seeds, some of them are already fixed for you. Right. A lot of you have, with, with big states, have big population centers where you just automatically allocate, well, that, you know, Chicago gets three representatives automatically because it's got three million people in the city alone. Right? Or um, uh, St. Louis, right? You guys have dedicated two representatives to St. Louis City and St. Louis uh, County, for instance, right? So th no matter where you are, if you've got one of those, you've, you've kind of both done the seed and the allocation to that. So you only will have to do the remaining congressional districts that you haven't already hard-coded into your model already. Yes, so you have to do one seed for each congressional district that you haven't hard-coded already. So what, does, what kind of constraint does saying that E can't be in this district unless B, C, or F is already in that congressional district? What does that sound like? Um, oh, it won't have to, because we will, we will only do it this far. Uh, what, what type of constraint does that sound like? Yes? Conditional. Conditional, right? E is conditional on B, C, or F being in that. So, if you remember, we said that the conditional is X of J minus X of I is less than or equal to zero. That's our, our general template for doing a conditional constraint. But this is one parameter, or one variable, dependent upon one other parameter right here. Right? Yes, Chris? We can have that to be the three added together. Yeah, so we can change this to be, I will change my subscripts now to represent the counties, that if we combine these together, x sub b plus x sub c plus x sub f, is less than or equal to zero, we have now made that conditional claim true. That if <coughs> this is zero, and this is zero, and this is zero, the only way that this inequality continues to hold 
is if we also don't put x of e in there. But as soon as one or more of these values are non-zero, we can let this value be non-zero because this will force that to be non-positive. Okay, so this is going to be kind of the, the key step that you need to do with your model. <coughs> okay, now this is for the question of does E belong to congressional district number one? Okay, so you're going to have that constraint there. But E might not be in congressional district number one, it might be in congressional district number two, right? Which is maybe the seed is down here. And so not only do you have this constraint right here, but you have to have a constraint for whether E should be in congressional district number two. What would that constraint look like? Which counties are closer to seed for congressional district two than E is? G, H, and I are, right? So how are we going to incorporate that into this, this template here? My X. What, go ahead. Minus X of G plus X of H plus X of I. Okay. Now we've got a second constraint. Both of these have to be true. I'm only going to let X of E in Congressional District 1 if this is true. I'll only let X of E in Congressional District 2 if this is true. Um, but we need some way to, to represent this. Because up here, we wanted to say, I only want E in Congressional District 1 if these are in Congressional District 1. So I'm going to put a superscript here to indicate which Congressional District. So, X of E is in Congressional District 1 if these are in Congressional District number 1. X sub E is in Congressional District 2 if these are in Congressional District number 2. Right here. And I will have an X sub 3 E and an X sub 4 E or super E and so forth for all N Congressional Districts that, that I have where I will look for each of those seeds, I will look at my neighbors for, Congress, uh, for County E, and I will look which of my neighbors, and we're only looking at our neighbors here, are closer to that seed, and that's what will go into here. Okay. And then, <clears throat> what is also true, you already have this, in, in your already existing thing, is that um, right? It says that if I sum up all these x of e's with this superscript right here, I'm only going to have a total of one. Right? I can only be in one congressional district. I'm not allowed to be in more than one congressional district here. So that will combine all these together, all these values here so I don't accidentally get put in more than one congressional district. You already have this built into your model already. right? You already are limiting your counties to being part of a single um, congressional district and not being part. So that is already there. We're com so you know what I mean by X sub E super I. Now it's one, it's one of those Boolean values that you set that entire row, only one of those is allowed to be a one, all the rest have to be a zero. Yes, David. So my state has 13 districts and 100 counties. Does that mean I'm going to have 1,300 formulas? With that doesn't mean you're going to have 1,300 formulas. Okay. okay. Because you have one <laughs> of these for each congressional district Great. for yeah. every single county. Okay. And each of these is um, different, 
you can't look at some other county and compute what this is going to be for some other county. They're unique, they're unique for every county and they're unique for every seed. Okay. Now, um, I have a tool and I will provide a link to it that tries to help um, write these uh, <clears throat> constraints for you because who wants to write 1300 constraints, right? <laughs> this is the perfect thing for a computer program to do for you. Um, it works in most cases, okay? Um, but it, it is, um, <clears throat> it makes some assumptions that aren't always true because of um, counties being weird shapes, okay? So at least it can get you uh, most of the way there in, in writing these things. But you might have to hand check some of these. As an example, I forget who is doing uh, Michigan, but Michigan has this uh, uh, weird shape, right, because of the uh, upper peninsula. It, it kind of looks like this if you're if you're into kind of abstract art, I guess. Um, and and so you've got Lake Michigan right here, right? And and so by by closer this right here, this spot on the upper peninsula is closer to here than it is to this spot on the upper peninsula. And so my code says, oh yes, these are connected or connectable. When via, via land routes, it has to go this way to get that. And so this, via a land route, is still the closer connection than this. And so it shouldn't make that assumption, okay? So it, it breaks on those kind of uh, conditions, unfortunately, because of the shape. Uh, Louisiana, can sometimes um, confuse it because of the L shape as well. It's got a similar kind of, of behavior. It mostly works on most states, but don't just run it and say, oh, well, I've got my equations. It, Dr. Geiser generated them for me. They're good to go. No, it's a start. It's not the done deal, okay? Um, and you need to make sure that you input your data in the right format for my code to work. It, definitely doesn't, is not tolerant of mistakes. Um, I have not spent a lot of time saying, oh, well, maybe they could input it this way, or maybe they could input it that way. No, if you don't do it exactly like I want, it just breaks. Okay? <laughs> so, um, so, that will get you maybe 75% of the way there. At least it will generate a uh, candidate equation for each one of these, and you might have to, to fix it. Uh, up for 10, 15 percent of, of the counties, but 10 or 15 percent is a lot better than 100 percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to depend upon my mostly working solution, you are very welcome to write your 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 own uh, code that deals specifically with the behavior of, of your county and uses the format that that you want and so forth. Um, that's that's awesome. That's that's using your your uh, problem solving skills in a very uh, efficient manner, and I encourage that. Okay, so <clears throat> you definitely want to use a program to do this because um, once you do this for for Friday, and then you change where your seeds are, all of these equations are going to change. <laughs> Right? So you don't want to do it by hand and then come back and find out, oh, I've got to do it by hand two more times. Okay? This is why you want to use a computer program to help solve big problems for you instead of doing it by hand. Right? So, uh, so as far as you're concerned, you have to identify where you're going to put your seeds. There's no right or wrong place to put the seeds um, because you're going to have to repeat this three times. Uh, what I would like to encourage you to do is pick and think about what your seeds may be for the second and third one so you have kind of an idea of this is what I'm going to do because 
if you make three things where the seeds are basically in the same spot, you're probably not going to get that much difference in, in outcome, and it's going to be a really uh, difficult re final report to, to write when you're like, well, there wasn't any difference in the outcomes. So try to pick seeds that you think will generate uh, different uh, structures when, when, they, when they use this behavior right here. Okay? Um, so like I did in the corners at one time and in the middle a uh, second time. I think that would be an example of something that is going to generate very different behavior. I can't guarantee it for your state, but it's, it's an example that, that might work. Yeah. So you need a CD for each district, <coughs> and then what are the like parameters for where we place them? Do you want them by a big city or not necessarily? Um, I would probably explore both of those for one of mine. One, because <coughs> this, is, this is not an easy answer even if you're talking about people who are doing redistricting for a living. Um, let's say we're doing Indiana as an example, right? We've got two big population centers, right? We've got a big population center here in Indianapolis, and we've got a big population center here in Lake County as a suburb of the, of the Chicagoland area. Um, and so when you're doing that, do you want to do kind of like a pie shape, and you, you go out like this, and you split up this big population center like this and split it into a bunch of congressional districts. That's one way that you can split this population up between a bunch of congressional districts. Another solution, however, is to make uh, most of this be one congressional district and then you break it up into areas like this. This <coughs> strategy can make sense, and it can be really easy to get equal parts uh, of people in each congressional district. But some people would argue that this isn't going to get you um, representatives of the, the diversity of ideas and, and socioeconomic backgrounds that people come from. Because people who live in Indianapolis probably have different beliefs and values and, and care about different things than people in rural Grant County. And so maybe you might want to have a representative for the urban areas separate than an area for the, the rural areas just because they, they represent different ideals. And we can see that in our country in general at large, right? On the coast you get very blue and in the metropolitan areas you get very blue, but in the interior you have a lot of red uh, areas and so maybe it's good to have both some representatives for for those rural areas and some for the urban areas and that that would better reflect the the people if you wanted to try to get it this um, if, if you were a Republican this would be a great way to try to dilute the Democratic vote right because you could put a little bit of the Democrats here and uh, a little bit here, a little bit here, and it'd be a way to kind of prevent that. Um, <clears throat> but you might say, hey, I know the Democrats are going to get at least one or two votes. I'm going to try to concentrate them all into this one area, and then there's no way that they're going to get these other votes, too. So even if you're thinking, I want to uh, be a gerrymander, or I don't want to be a gerrymander, you can come up with arguments why both of these 